first time the village of Mariah did the old time wedding reenactment was in 1962 when Trinidad and Tobago became an independent nation and the then Prime Minister Dr. Eric Williams asked for the village to do something to portray something in Tobago so they decided that a traditional wedding was the best thing they could do. time wedding is significant to Mariah. Now with the traditional wedding we have various parts. You know the night before the wedding you will have the bachelor night. The bachelor night where the groom will have to prove his worth. You know long time they will say the man has to bust the wood. When they say bust the wood they go in and look for the wood with the biggest nut in the bush. And say this man has to prove that he's strong enough because if he can't bust that wood there he can't get my daughter. Because if he can't bust the wood, how are we providing for my child? How are we feeding my grandchildren? He had to be strong enough to do certain things. <laughs> and on the wedding day, after, after he has proven his prowess, on the wedding day, you will start with the bridal affair. The bridal affair is something that happens at the bride's home before we move on to the actual wedding at the church. A young bride today and a young groom. go to the church hall we have the ceremony but one thing that is not missing from the church hall is the village maho So the village Mako is one of the most important people at the church. She's the person that will give you information that she thinks that she knows about both the bride and the groom and their family. When you come on the procession, you will see those girls in those fancy dresses, their hats with the flowers, and the gentlemen in their scissors tail coats and their nice top hats. They are immaculately dressed. And then at the front of the wedding, you can't miss them, the characters. Now the characters carry some things that hold some significance to a married couple long ago. You will see the lady with the canister. That is to make sure that she's not leaving home naked. And the coal pot lady, the coal pot lady is to show you that she, she could cook. She's domesticated. She can do certain things. Then there's, well, the washerwoman is the lady that comes from the river. When she comes from the river, she sees weddings, so she fall in. So is the woodman. Then you will see a lady with a young breadfruit. That lady with the young breadfruit, the breadfruit is to signify that the husband is getting a virgin bride. You know, nowadays we just have our wedding reception in one long time, they will have them in separate parts. One part at the bride's house, one part at the groom's house. So when we go to the bride's house at first, we're going to have cake and wine. When you get to the house, you have to dance around that house three times. And you're doing that because you want to bless the union so you're going around the house three times and you're dancing 
after you have the cake and wine, you will see what people in the wedding dance and have a good time until we proceed and we go back to the um the groom's house. Going to the groom's house now, this is where everybody wants to show off their dance skills because it's coming down to the end so they're putting all their energy and effort into it. When you're seeing their dancing skills, you will see them doing the brush back, you will see them doing the breakaway and the jig. And you see the brush back is significant to the wedding three steps forward, two steps back, because it's saying that you're going into a new future, but you're not forgetting the past that you came from. So you're going with your three steps forward, but you're always taking two steps back to hold your memory. Massa and his wife are always in the wedding because in the plantation days, sometimes the parents of the bride and groom or someone, someone of the parents of the bride and groom would be working for Massa. So when they have a wedding, Massa in turn will contribute and, so, and they too come and show up for the wedding to support their workers in their family events. We have speechifiers. It's usually like a godfather or an uncle in the family who comes to give a wedding speech to bless the wedding. So as to explicate my mental faculty on this joyful efficacious and on this momentous occasion. Amen, Jonesy. As I look around at Jesus' guesses in an ontatical physiognomy, it fills my heart with philanthropic fear. Mm -hmm. One thing I must say though, is that teeth and tongue must meet. But when teeth and tongue meet, they must remember for do like the Bible say, and for live like Isaac and Rebecca, never to let the sun go down with them in wrath. And then we have people doing traditional dances, like the Mariko. You will see the real and jig. You will see the Castilian. You will see the heel and toe, you will see the passe, and you will see the main dance called the Grand Change. The Grand Change is the signature dance, it's a celebratory dance that they do. And in the end, you will see them always dancing and you're changing partners. Because while you're celebrating with everybody, we're celebrating with each other, and we're going from person to person to celebrate. The bridal affair is one of those things that people, don't, that people rarely see on Heritage Day. It was one of those aspects where it was considered very important for the bride. Now on her wedding morning, when she goes to dress, you will see that she will go by, is that she will go by Nenen or she will go by Granny or some elder in the family to get dressed. And when she gets there, you will see some elders, whether it's from the village, the ladies from the village or in her family, they would come to give her some words of congratulation. But not only that, they are coming to tell her about what is expected of her as a wife. You have to love your husband. You have to be faithful to your husband. You know, we see you're going down with your coal pot, so you know you have to cook, wash, and clean for your husband. Because you are now a homemaker, and you now have a family to take care of. Also, we're sending you down with your canister. We're not sending you away naked. We're sending you with clothes. We're sending you with bedding. We're sending you with pillows. We're sending you with everything. So therefore, when you get to your marital home, you're not going in with your two long hands. You're going in with some things but one of the traditions that was uh, that is upheld is the 
something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Something old, sometimes it can be, you know, well, they wouldn't see it on the day. But when the bride is dressed, she will have on a pantaloon, we call it a four string drawers. It's a cotton pants and it is full with some edging on the feet and thing and a, a, that is under the big can can skirt so you know sometimes you get some of these additions from granny or some auntie or something so you get that something borrowed something old something that you have that you want to wear and something new probably a wedding dress probably a shoe or something that you're wearing is something new and the something blue would be something underneath that we can't see but you maintain that you're something old you're something new something borrowed and something blue and i know traditionally a lot of people maintain that tradition for today sometimes a bride is very young she is fresh out of her teens and she has never left her parents' house before. So having that bridal affair is very important because she will need those lessons. She will need that knowledge because the elders would impart their knowledge. But when you leave your parents' home and come straight from your parents' home into, into a home of your own, that is a big step. So it is very important for them to give you those life lessons and to teach you what needs to be done in your home. Real dance is a traditional ritual that let us do with tambourine music. You have to get tambourine music for that. Normally when the tambourine, when you beat the tambourine and the violin ring out, that does get the spirit moving. So somebody got ride. You just get real dance for all different, different occasions. Like somebody getting married or somebody sick or some family member you know maybe they excel in something whether it's exam or whatever or a baby born a new baby born in the family so you know you get a little thanksgiving you celebrate with a little thanksgiving and all of this come you you, you get it revealed from a real dance whether what happened was good you know, and you get the family, the whole family, and the ancestors. Now, you can't do nothing with real dance unless you call your ancestors. If not, you're in trouble. You have to call them. Call the time. Please. Somebody sick. Come down. You try doctor, sure doctor up, and doctor, and everybody still sick now, get over. Somebody closer. may suggest you get a real dance. You have to call the ancestors before. You know, you get two family members with you and you go call the ancestors. You go with your rum, your water, and your sweet water. You throw a little drop, little drop, and you talk to them. You let them know, well, look now, so, so, so sick. And are we want to know where wrong? So we are give our real dance. At such and such date, are we want are you for come around? Are we want help? And are we want are you help with this? If somebody are gonna get married, you can't marry just so. You have to get a real dance there. That real dance there for tell you whether the wedding good, whether the boy match for the girl and whether the marriage they are going to last. So only at the real dance, they are going to reveal that. If I say somebody may excel some way about, and you give a real dance, but that could be 
celebration. You know it's going to be celebration. So you are call all the ancestors again. And all the family. And you get together and you celebrate. And even from that celebration day, they go tell you maybe how would the girl go continue in, in the future endeavors. Wherever she try in future, how she go get along. Nice. Nice. Sitaria, spell mosquito. M O S Q U I T O Miss. Ah, this is wow. the yeah. When somebody ride, it does be some one of the ancestors who gone before, one of them dead people, one of them, I talk to you. It come as though me. I tell you something, but not me really attack. No me vice raget. Raget one of them old people were dead and gone vice. So them use me now as a messenger for bring the message to you. But as the tambour music I play, what you have in the pocket? With have the violin and everything going, or you want to me never yeah. just Take come out to and say, you know they say. You're going to have to dance and when you ride, you do all kind of and call for things that you not even know are going on. Things are happening that you not even know you do. Because when you're done, when people tell you, you're not the wiser because you don't know what takes place. So that's what we mean when, when they say somebody ride. I give you the real thing. You see this? You see the tambourine. No, you could play this for a wedding. If a person's sick, you could play this. A man go read, a man go ride, and you could hear anybody with it. Ride and go away. Ah, boy. When you ride, it's a spirit that takes you. It will bring you back, give you remedicine to cure the person. You know? Let us get a real dance. Keep real dance on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. Most preferable Friday. They like Friday. Must see as they're close to the weekend. Whatever it is to add to that, me no know. But Friday are the better day for get a real dance. When you got to start a real dance, you have to get your rum, your water, and your sweet water. And don't forget that sweet water. You have to forget that. And get your tambourines, all your musicians, tambourine, violin, the whole works. And then now you get your immediate family. Then everybody else could join in. And now you have to go by the four roads. You don't have to look for a four roads quite out of junction. Just by the entrance to your house where you go get a little corner. Once you get a little corner there. And you go down there and start to play and march, go up at the yard. Now you are full. While you go up at the yard, you throw your sweet water and you drum and I call the ancestors. Let them know well, this are the real dance men invite you to. I want you to come around and reveal everything to me where should take place here tonight. And now they go play. Go up at the yard and play go around the house three times. They knock and do them halfway. You have to go three times around the house. And when they come back now, the musician first go into the house and then the family members follow. I didn't cry to my mom to come here. I got it last night. When they house, I want to so sorry real dance. You hear me? Yes. And the boy in there wrote there. We want to go perform the rituals and come in so by that time they back back the house because who has space for dancers. You hear me? I'm going to come again. Ups come now. Somebody may address, get up, pick up the sick person, and start to dance with she. Eventually, one next one you go see, he ride. And he might throw down himself a ground, hip down himself a ground. 
car to beat up, you go roll, you go get up. Make all kind of sit with me. Because you don't know what you do. Even though you chop yourself there, you never know, feel nothing. And you go ride. You know they say, all the people that are a silk cotton tree, all things does go on at the silk cotton tree route. So he gone down at the silk cotton now. Where you do down there? I we no know. Who you talk to down there? I we only can speculate at the ancestors you go get advice from. But everything superstitious used to be around that silly cotton tree. And when he come back, well, and now you come back attack, not in your own voice. And he go there. You know you tramp, I come back a tramp. When he come to you, sometimes he tell you, stop a music. Stop the music the one thing. And he just start to talk. They start to tell you. Badger with blue. Or you know whatever it is they tell him to do. He will come now and he reveal it to them. What to do with the girl. How to do it. And when to do it. Sometimes they might give you time. What time for Badger? Badger 12 o'clock a day. With so 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 bush. Go pick that bush there and rub up and Badger. And no fool you fact, two, three days time, the girl a healthy body they are run, but look like at like me and you. No ask me where they do, but it work. It does work. When for married now, well, most time the bride never even they are wrong. Because them they're busy and see what they done done for next day. And the same thing I go happen with the real dance again. You see the, somebody go ride and they take off for the silk cotton tree. When they go wrong there, then they come back. And then go start to tell you. Ah oh boy, if, if it good, if you hear they say, ah oh boy, things good here tonight. Eh, hey, that's our good match. But if when they come back, you hear they say, hmm, this is not nice at all. This is not good tonight at all. Tell yourself. In the end, they might come up with the solution that that match, is that boy, they not match the like that. No mind where you do, no mind what you do, oh, you they not going to live together for long. You crazy? Oh, 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 stop oh, my out loud. Look here, girl. Oh. My son, do you take this woman to be your love for real wife? I does. Amen. <laughs> so say amen. 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 I pronounce him man and wife. You said kiss the bride. Yeah. <laughs> The real dance, it was really, is a, a, a message from the ancestors. And you should really take that message to heart sometimes. You have to work out. You see that man call Larson? You see Larson? Oh, he buried something. Hey, Larson? That's a gift I give you. Go ahead. That's right, boy. That's right. Go ahead. Oh, wait. I could play. Ah, man. That's why, that's why I show you to play the tambourine. But I still can't play as good as you. But right here. When I was alive, I was playing it and be better. You know what? Come back. You ain't know what you're saying, man. Man, I did 40 years ago. If you want to know about Tobago, and if you want to know about Obiao, look at where really start from Mount Greece up to. Entrance of Golden Lane on the hill. And I was born in 1932 in Lekato. My father's name was Jacob Thomas, and my mother's name was Edna Dimas Marito Thomas. My father died in 1952, and my mother died in. 
2004. Long life. She died at 104 years when she died. Lakatu was always a culture village. We sat our heritage in Lakatu. And the heritage was promoted by some people called Ika Wallace, Louis Thomas, Eli Kennedy, Beatrice, a little gentleman they called Mr. Ulrich, and more people in the Lekatu Community Centre. I took part in the heritage one year, once. I acted as a lawyer for a lady that had a piece of land and somebody was trying to confiscate the land from her. That was my part. I don't know from the love of liberty. Good. I don't know forging no signature. And as far as I see, all land and all land. The land was sold. So yes, this okay. case, I move and I dismiss it. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Honor. Dismiss what? It was stupidness. Why the hell did I dismiss oh, it? I I'm going to hit you with my briefcase. Thank you, too. Was the home of Tambrin. That guy, Mr. Alston Edwards, there. His father and his brothers and them. Was the best Tambrin prayers in Tobago. Okay. Tell his father, George, Arthur. You know, Mr. Arthur, I've been like you call Baudong. Well, Baudong is one of them children. He's one of their sister children. And he makes Tambrin up to now. So if you want some tambourine, check Bowdoin. Boy, come with it, come with it. And he's one of the culture fella in the heritage life. in Lekitu. Yeah, with the problems I go through, I never know that he have a graveyard down a whole church. We were doing different programs like dancing, singing, you know, all kinds of things like to show the people. Yeah. But to explain what they're showing the people is not that important in the sense that you have to be there to see it. The heritage in Lakito was always in progress and always good. <laughs> what? Ma, you see why I does not let them help me do nothing? Because you're not trained them. Oh God, let them, Hello? Watch me, give me the broom. Watch me go. You're sweeping so. Hold it and listen to me. You're not patch for reading now. This are the, this are the shovel. We take up the rubbish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who she sit down there? Cutting your foot. Yes. Gin and Who she sit down there? Sit down. No, you never stand up. Sit down. Come right. up. Sit down. Fix you up good. Mm hmm. Mm. Who she lay down there, sir? Mm. Now why are you doing that? You don't worry yourself about that. That kind of work you say take three months, girl. Mm, yeah, big, 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 big work. All three mm -hmm. months. All three months. Our teachers used to keep in table peace down at the school, most of the times. The day before, we have a cookout in the center up there. The gentleman they call Mr. Oliver Grant, he is one of the heritage big man in Lekito. He does do the Obia man work. Beard with bush, give you tea. Rub you down with oil, all kind of thing. That is the man. You can't go down there, so you have to have yourself to go down there. With what? Gone? You, gone? You can you get it? No. Oh, God. That's just the why every time I walk, I walk with me, apparatus them. Look who. Yali, put them on your head. Yali, put them on your head. I said, put them on your head. Come, put them on your head. You get sad? Are you, not, are you not getting nothing there? No, brother boy. Look at the crystal. No, brother boy, I don't want to find me, son. Look at the crystal. No, no, His uncles and them was not no Obia man. They were science. They had science. But then, we were taught about the Obia thing. It wasn't the, what they know Obia. It was the science. Science is that you could do something and stop something. And we say, a fellow have a sheep down there. Mm. And somebody come and steal it. And you go to one of them fellas, 
They could let the person bring back the, the goat. His uncle had a story that he told me that the uncle lost a planting in his garden. When he go to the garden, he missed the planting. You know the man killed the planting by he. The man would steal the planting, would thief the planting, carry home the planting by the owner of the planting. Mm. Well, that is science. That is not Obia. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who could have do that in the Kito and Golden Lane. What kind of provocation is last in my city? Me, they work hard, hard, a villager. Me plant my sword and then me leave what? 13 hand. Bunch of banana here, and one with three, and you know, they take the one with 30 and left the one with three. They dig up all me that chin and me sweet potato, them what? Well, you see this here? Yeah? I don't know who I are playing with, you know. Miss Roslyn? Yes, honey. You bring a bunch of green fit for Christine Redding. Eh, eh. Are you nice and kind, sir? <laughs> me yeah. appreciate it very much. Put a shilling below. Right. Talk to the shilling. Tell the shilling exactly where you want them for do. Mm-hmm. Last him. Call everybody name you want to go here again. Right. You get dog? Me can want a little dog there, but me doesn't want to do that now. All right. Last him. Tell the stone. When you hear me put you there, me now feed you. You have to go back a river, eat crayfish and fish. You have carried the stone up in your garden. Plant the manjak fork. Get a pad. Pull two flex on the banana tree. Mm -hmm. Make a pad. You know like where you put on your head to carry on the banana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You put the stone in there. Talk to the stone. Tell him everything you want him for do. Mm -hmm. Last him. Here what will happen. Whoever have your garden, I will stay there. Good. No. You have to give them one kick in there in order for them to come out of your garden. Hey! Oh, oh. Ay, ay, ay. Watch how the stem set because I have to stick it back on you. Know? Me say, watch there. My one eye. The next time this happen, trust me. Which part my last eye then I find my Come on. We had a fellow call Mr. Tom. But it's Tom. Holding this. Well, you used to do the science, like if you're sick. You could go and he will bathe you and get you better and things like that. That was we were calling Obia, but it was not Obia. It was a kind of bad language or bad word to say about people when they get you better. Eh, hey, Obia? Just like the doctor. If you go in the hospital and the doctor gets you better, you call him Obia man? You can't call him Obia man. Because he gets you better. Well, those, he saw them people long ago used to work. Right? Like if a woman making a baby and the baby tying in them and they can't make the baby, a midwife will come and do certain things with the lady who is making the baby and the baby will come. There was a lady in Golan called Miss Atansa. She used to do that. Even she used to go in the hospital and do that. And you pull it also. I right, give me them leaf there. Ban one here. One here. I want you. This is a the pain. Give me a piece of that cloth there. <laughs> now you come from below and you band so and you tie in front so the pain will stay up top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miguel. Me yeah. think you're good now, Anna. Thank you, Batista. All Thank right, you. take the time and go fast. Yeah, me go, me go, go fast. You must knock out the pain from your hand. <laughs> Police and them go by Mr. Tom to lock him up, say he walk in. As you say, Obia oh, then. Yeah. So the people was waiting there to get solved and thing. 
Il s'est mis à toi, donc policemen comme un père. Il s'est là comme man. Policemen en aimant encore pas un groupe. Good morning, Mr. Tom. Mr. Tom, good morning. Tu as le commun. Il aime plus tuer tout ce dont. Et si on a tué deux fois, on a tué des nids de vous tous les. Les coups n'ont pas, les coups n'ont pas montré les hausses. On laisse. Il faut des motions. Il doit y voir si about the people and them and everything. And the two policemen sitting sitting on the chair there, they couldn't move. You get men. If you go in the garden and you see the thing, you have to stay in the garden. They left you to stay there. You cannot move. Now I leave in your you head. watch back. And and listen to me carefully. Go the only one. He lose you because he ties the garden. Tata left it there. Lilia, no Lilia, no Lilia, and she doesn't come here. My son-in-law, little Tan, he go have to take over that garden here for me now. And my two other daughters, them. Nobody else is to come, and me forget, and myself. Because me no want when me come here, you tell me me care for. I mean, we know the word Obia, but where, where Obia means? Where the word Obia means? What is the meaning of Obia? We never got to a dictionary to know what is the meaning of Obia. If anybody go to a dictionary and tell me what is the word obia, what well, obia means, I will understand that. But obia is something to defend yourself or to get you better. So I will call that science. You see that book here? Now go fix some gold. You see that something here, sir? This is some wood slave powder. Now the same science could kill and people too. And it with other things in the book. I could kill hour. you. I wonder if you understand me. The work you're doing, he could put you to run mad like a shot in the road up and down. People wouldn't know what you were. People could do you Listen that. Listen to me, good. My girl, the book. No open now, you know. Don't open the book. No, ma. Go and quick and carry the she. She go give it back when she done. Titaira, you hear me tell you? Don't open the book. Yes, ma. We'll open it. All right. Go on and make case come back. All right, ma. It's only four o'clock, you know. I seen sit and Gina just now. Let me go and revise a little, eh? Mom must be going back and sleep. Sitaira, where the book me give me tell you no opener. Who is Sitaira? Sitaira, why you open the book? Sitaira, where the book? I don't know you, lady. I am Alawishin. All know that could still do you that, you know? Maybe that is what they call Ubia. Because he good in certain part and he bad in certain way. So I don't know which one of the side they're saying is Ubia. Right? If it has some people presently know that live in around the world, whether you Trinidad, Tobago, anywhere you go, you need that St. Vincent and Vincent. And you see they're walking all about. We just say they're then good. People put them so. Yeah, that fella from Gulenlina, young boy. You think like man sheep. One day he came here, right here he came here. He, was, he just walked the road and thing. Say, Mr. Papi, give me, give me a sweet drink now. I'm hungry. He said, why are you doing that? He said, me, me finger one sheep and they put me for, 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 for angle sheep and walk a road. No, we're not lying. It's what really happened to him. Right? That really happened to him.
Pembroke in post-slavery. Brutus, as the legend says, was a young boy who frequented the, a beach in Pembroke called Pembroke Bay. And it is said that one day while he was on the beach, he saw this pirate ship coming in and he hid himself in a coconut tree. Pirates came off the ship and buried some treasure in the sand. One of their, their, their accomplices asked, who will, who will guard this treasure? And he said, I will guard this treasure. And they shot him and buried him with the treasure in the sand. When they left, Brutus came down from the tree, dug up the treasure, and it is said that he purchased Pembroke Estate with the money. We had the establishment in Pembroke of what we call drum yards. Now a drum yard is a place reserved in your, in your yard or in your household where you will have festivals. Because you know our, our forefathers and ancestors believed and loved the festivals. They, they would celebrate everything, a childbirth, well death of course is the dead week situation, it's really a celebration, the building of a new house and all that. They, they celebrate everything. And so these practices existed in Pembroke in seven yards in the village of Pembroke. All the real Bel Air, Salaka feasts and all that was done by all the yards, but people had their favorite. And some of these yards were known for Salaka feasts or known for Bel Air, etc. If you have a boat christening or a house christening, or if you have a, a, another occasion and Salaka feast was really a Thanksgiving festival done, done by, by the, the devotees and, and, and the folks who would have wanted to communicate or to, or to give thanks. And it included the invitation of your elders who passed and, and who went on. Now, one thing that we had in Pembroke was what we call the August Day Celebration. August Day celebration was done, was held on the 1st of August. It is really emancipation celebration, but they call it August Day. And, and so on the 1st of August, we had a, a favorite rum shop in Pembroke, the Derrick's Rum Shop. And it, there was a, 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 a chene tree, and under that was a, we could call it a yard. And so all the, the, the drummers and all the families from the drum yards will come there on the 1st of August. You will have stick fight, you will have speech ban. You will have masquerade, you will have nation drumming, you will have, so it's a celebration of, and it was really emancipation celebration, but they call it August Day. So the entire month of August was celebration by our people in Pembroke. And so, you know, different people will go by, by I'll go by you, the Capes will go by the, by the Smarts and so, and you have food and you have drumming and, 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 and you have celebration. So August time in Pembroke was big, you know, there was drumming all over. Our ancestors, and in African culture, they do libations. Our ancestors also have a basic belief in, well, in grappling with the afterlife. Because you know the afterlife is something that even Christians, everybody have a, a, a theory as to what happened, purgatory, etc., etc. But their afterlife is that, their belief in the afterlife is that when they die, and I don't know, I don't know if it's the drudgery of slavery, that some people thought that you will be free your spirit will be free when you die. But most people believe that when you die, you will go back to Guinea. Your spirit goes back to Guinea. The Gangang Sera um, 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 legend is really about that. Don't eat no salt because you have to fly back home when you die. And even though you're a slave, the slavery can't hold you down. You can hold down the physical body, but it cannot disturb your spirit. And so in the grappling with the afterlife, people believed that your ancestors continue to live with you 
And so, just like if you're going to do something important, you will, your living father will say, Daddy, I'm going to buy a car. Right? The belief was that even though he dies now or your grandfather dies, you should consult them on various things that you're going to do. And that would involve, of course, they are dead. So it involves some kind of ritual that connects you. So in the August Day celebration, you would start with your libation, of course. Our people and our people believe in procession. Anything you're going to have impo that is important, you have a procession. So you gather somewhere at the four roads or so, you do where you are, and then you march to the place that you're going to have the, the, the event. So they would have done a procession. And then, of course, you will start with prayers. You know, one of the things that was really, you know, is really amazing. Even though our ancestors would have done their libations and put their Africanism into what they do, they will still have a prayer to God. So it, it, you, you had all that, all that mixture. So you'll have prayers. And then somebody who is the elder or the leading elder or the leading person will, will say what's going to happen today and would, of the course, bring greetings and welcome everybody, etc. And you roll the drum to you. Let me say it first before you. Jamba ho, baba ho, huga jange. Jamba ho. Opening your opening ceremony, which is the drumming, the big drum dance or the, the salaka, the nation dances, would have been done first to do the, 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 the blessing of the place, etc. etc. And it's a whole day of activities. You start with slaughtering the animals, and so you start with thanksgiving to for the food that you have, um, and of course, libations. Uh, there, there, there is always the preparation of the food for the the, the ancestors, which should be saltless and has its own attendant rituals, you know, rules of engagement. And so you will have that food being presented to them, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the ritual itself. Yes, folks. Pembroke has its own legend. Our legacy continues. I mean, I am, of course, a product of, of the Pembroke legacy. But I must mention people like Jesse Taylor, Elvis Rajman, Daryl Gregg, well, she, her name is Zafia now, but Darcel, <laughs> Darcel Kirk is now Zafia Jerry, who's, who has her own dance, dance troupe. People like Gillian Franklin, I think she has a group also, is part of it. My own sister Karen, Karen Berkeley Charles. Shaquille Jones is one of our products. He, he danced and, and learned as a little guy. And his parents are part of the initial drum yard syndrome. So he is also part of it. And we continue to produce because... Part of our, our, our thing is preservation. Part of this festival yard concept and this heritage park concept is preservation of our culture. This heritage village, really, is the rep representation of the Pembroke's drum yard legacy. So we do Salaga Feast here and we do, but the concept was really to have a space that would represent all the seven year drum yards of Pembroke. All the drum yards eventually. I don't, I don't want to say deteriorated, but it sort of retracted. Because when the elders died, some of the younger people did not carry on the tradition, so it, it waned. But Imelda Cookshank was the last surviving of the Cape's Yard. We have this nice place. Let us create a village, and, instead of, and, and, and we can still have the festival yard in the village, because you can't have a yard, a festival yard, in an open space. Just so it, it has to be in a village. Because the festival yard or the drum yard was in somebody's home in the back, in the back. and we agreed. Our, our, our elders and ancestors did us a real justice. They were done injustice. I mean, I wasn't in slavery. But you could, you could imagine what slavery felt like, eh? you know, the punishment and so on. And you know, one of the things I thank our elders for is maintaining our identity. Identity. They hid, they hid the culture in various ways, disguise it in front of the massa. 
do a whole belly ritual that is an African ritual, but, but yet resemble the ball, the French ball, you know? So you have a grand belly, which is an imitation of the French ball with all the nice trees and the, and the, the clothes and so on. But inside there, we were doing ritual. Most of our people teach you at their feet. When I say that, you have to be with the elder for a number of years to learn. Now we have a situation where we have people studying the arts, which is good, because you know in three or four years you could get the degree and so, but you still have to do some practice, eh? yeah? But I learned at the feet of, 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 of the elders, and everything I learned is from them, as well as doing my own research, you know. If they didn't preserve the culture, you and I would have never known our identity for today. Charlottesville Village, as it now exists, emerged in 1834 from the combination of three estates, Telescope, Observatory, and Charlottesville Estate. Charlottesville and Observatory was owned by Cecil Gray, who died in the year 1827. At some point later, Telescope Estate was emerged and the three estates were worked under the umbrella of Charlottesville Estate. The site of the American base in observatory, commonly called Trig, during World War II, this site was occupied by the American forces and it provides a great view of the village and the surrounding seafront. From this vantage point, the American maintained the coast and tracked the German submarines and other ships that passed on the horizon. Wesleyan Place called Mount Stewart on the crest of Bark Hill. On the left lies five acres of land owned by the Methodist Church. The church chapel once occupied the area and it is said that a careful search would reveal the abandoned graves of the ancestors. A couple of years in front could be found the ruins of this sugar house. Trees are growing out of the foundations. They are visible. Copper used for making sugar in those times and shards of all the pottery, all the kitchen utensils, all the kitchen utensils and tools are still visible in the area. No background, but it's named because of the people, the slave masters who lived there. 
They were called Bakram because of their complexion. Now we say white people. When one reach point, there is a clear view of St. Giles and the area that was called Marrow's Point. Where Marrow's a slave committed suicide by jumping into the sea. Marrow's was a slave who stood out strong against the maltreatment of her fellow slave. And because she stood out, she never settled for anything. She never wanted advantage. She didn't like to see advantage on these people. So they tied her up in order to flog her. But she was a very strong woman. She managed to free herself she also had two children and she grabbed the two children and she began to run to this point and when she thought as though they would catch up on her she threw the children in the sea and she followed them and from that day up to this day that point is known as Maru's point and even when the fishermen go out to fish the water is always rough and unstable and still and unless they put some, throw some rum in the water to calm the waves, the waves will begin to, will continue to be forceful. There is a point they have to be very careful. Giles, or it is sometimes called Melville Island or Booby Island. We don't know clearly the story about the Melville Island. Maybe it was owned by some millionaire that lot of land called Melville Island. We can see from up there, from Flagstaff Hill, you would see parts, it's a nice scenery. Right? You can get a good scenery, a good panoramic view of most parts of Charlottesville. Over at the guns, if you're up there, you will see over at the guns. And if you're there, you will see the Sisters Rock out in the Caribbean Sea. London Bridge is a bridge, it's a rail bridge. Two, two rocks facing each other with a hole in the middle. That's why it got its name, London Bridge. place they call Big River Allah. It got its name because farmers used to take their cows there to drink water, their animals, cows, goat, sheep, whatever they, they had. When it's raining, you can hear the river grumbling hard from a distance and you could tell where well, you have to keep away because it becomes very dangerous. And the farmers would say to each other, why your hair of Big River Allah? That is how it got its name. Flagstaff Hill, there is where the American base was. They erected a tower about 165 feet tall. When the ships come to the head of the island and they see that light, they would know they are near to land or you know, take up their point from there to go wherever. Even planes, aircraft then go right up there to the head of the island before taking out to far off countries. Right, so we, could, we used to see, I don't look out for it now, but you, you would see the planes and you could tell when the 
the aircrafts coming from foreign because they must pass. Flagstaff Hill is the head of the land. They must pass at the head of the land before going to other designated places. The Hermitage Great House, that was an estate house where at first the slave masters used to be. They used to live there. Millionaires didn't. So they used to live there to control the estate and control the slaves that were there. The, fla the slaves had to work the land and there they used to reside. And some of them died there and were buried. Before, all did not go back to the place of destination. Those who died were buried around the great house. They had large vegetation, cocoa, coffee, coconut, fruit trees, animals, real, real, real things, livestock and vegetation was going there. And the slaves had to walk the land. Message from Republic Bank. <laughs>